My name is William Justice, and today I'm going to show you how to create this wrapping paper tearaway effect with a bit of paper and DaVinci Resolve. Happy holidays. I wanted to thank all my viewers and subscribers. I'm having a ton of fun doing this. Um, I really appreciate all the feedback and everything that I'm hearing from you. This is the gift giving season, so I wanted to create something with some wrapping paper. Okay, honestly, I'm not super happy with the way this turned out. I maybe got a little bit frustrated. Um, I think what I had, the idea I had in my head was going to be a lot better than the way this turned out. Um, I learned a lot from this video. Um, I definitely know if I did this again, I would do it much better and I think I could get a lot closer to what I was trying to do. Even though I'm not really happy with the way this turned out, um, I think it's okay. Um, that's why I'm doing this channel. I wanted to try things out, experiment, and learn and get better. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna kind of go through what I did, show you how I set it up, and then at the end of the video, I kind of wanted to talk about um, some of the things I learned and what I would actually do better next time. It's the holiday season. So I had this idea to try to do something with wrapping paper. Um, so to get started, I had to do some experiments to see what I could uh, set up. decided to uh, post these clips, but since they didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted, um, I'm not going to do it. Um, unless you want them, if you're interested in trying them out and playing around with them, let me know and um, I can put some links in there for you. Okay, so stick around. After um, I show you how to set up the effect in DaVinci Resolve, um, I'm going to kind of talk about what, what I could do better next time and kind of what I learned from actually doing the, the paper and some of the, the camera setup, lighting, and some things like that that would have helped the effect turn out better. Okay, thanks for watching. If you, if you like my videos, please subscribe, comment below. Let me know how I'm doing. I'd really love to hear from you. I hope you can learn something from my failures. I know I did. Um, that's how you improve. You make mistakes and you try to do better next time. Okay, here's some of the files that I created. The idea was to use a some blue or green paper and then key out those areas and dimension resolve to make them transparent so that um, the background image shows through. Um, a couple of issues, I think as I was moving around, um, I was creating some shadows and that was changing some of the shades of the, the colors and I wasn't getting a solid blue or green, which made the king a little bit more difficult. Also, the paper was kind of glossy, so you get that shine, so it's hard to get the solid color. Um, I haven't really done a lot of keying in the past, um, so this was kind of a learning experience for me. Um, another issue was that the lights were not really diffused, so especially when I put my hands in there, um, I was getting some really harsh shadows, um, so I had to kind of work around with those. Okay, so I'm, we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. Um, one is going to be using the uh, the color area, and the second is going to be using fusion. So for the, the first set, we have uh, this, this rip here with the, the green in the background, so we're going to key that out so it's transparent. And we're going to put that on top of this clip. I'm just outside um, looking around. So the first step is to move the, the wrapping paper clip up to the top and slide the my clip underneath that. We're going to select the wrapping paper clip and click on the color tab. So we're in here in the color, we're gonna select the, the eyedropper here, the qualifier, and we wanna to move to a frame where you can see the green. And we're gonna click on it, and you'll see up here that it selected the, it's gonna select the green area. Now to make it transparent, what we need to do is to right click in the node area, click add alpha output, and connect this little blue output to the blue output over here, and that's gonna let the alpha channel go through. You can see that it's selected the green. So what we want to do is kind of use the color qualifiers and kind of expand that area a little bit. You can move it around, find, find what's going to work. Now, to get it to the background image to show through where the green is, we click this icon here to invert it. And you can see that we see the paper and the my image is down below there. So the next thing we want to do is there's some green that was a little bit different color, a little bit different shade as the main, from the main green. So we're going to click this add, add selection range tool, 
go into the screen area and click it and that's going to key that out so that now um, there's a couple more areas you can see that my, my hand is a little bit green and there's some green in there we can keep clicking on that to try to get it out um, the other thing you can do is in this um, adjustments area you can click the second one and bump up the radius and then change the iterations and you'll see what that'll do is that takes the there's a little bit of a green shadow right around where my fingers are and you can use these to bring that down and take it out now it's also when you're doing that it's removing some of this paper tear so you don't want to do too much see it goes away but you want to do just enough to kind of get rid of some of that green um, there's a lot of different adjustments you can make in here and that one's pretty simple so you see when uh, we go back to the edit tab we can take a look at it And there's one thing, the paper was moving around there. It wasn't uh, down enough, which is, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay, that's how you do the first one. The second one is, is going to use this blue-green tear. And I did this one, I put some, um, some clear, um, clear uh, string on there and pulled it through. And I tried to kind of get rid of it a little bit um, before I created the final image here. Um, and this one... It's going to have the blue, which is going to be the top image, and it's going to tear away to what the green is going to be the bottom image. So the top image is going to be me walking around through the hall like this, and then it's going to transition to um, where I'm outside. So to do this one, we need to stack these clips and get them into fusion. So we're going to bring that one up. The order doesn't really matter here. So we're going to line, line these clips up, and we want to clip. These clips are a little bit too long, so we're going to want to, want to clip those. So we're going to use the blade tool and hit Control B and see it cut those out there. So let's take it into Fusion. So we're going to select these three clips, right click on that, and do New Fusion Clip. And you see here we had our Fusion Clip. To get into Fusion, we with that's the Fusion Clip selected, we're going to click Fusion. And here we go. So we're going to get rid of these merges because we don't need them. I was just trying to get the media in. So I'm going to select it and delete and delete and we'll get rid of that line. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get rid of that. Okay, let's see. We're going to hit media one. Okay, so we're going to rename this one to hallway and media three. We're going to hit F2 on that. Okay, that's going to be the paper. Okay, to F2, rename it to paper. And this one, this guy right here, hit F2, that's going to be outside. Okay, so we have, we have our three clips here. So first thing we want to do is click paper and hit two. And I think we'll just show one little output. Okay. So this is the paper tear. So what we want to do is to put the paper tear on top of the hallway clip. So we're going to connect the output of the paper to the output of the hallway, and we have this merge node. So we're going to hit 2 to select the merge node. Um, and just so you can see, I'm going to take the blending so you can see down. So the basically the paper is on top of the hallway. So I'm going to, with the paper selected, we're going to hit Control Space, and we're going to search for the Ultra Keyer. And we're going to add that. Then we're going to take the background. We're going to click this little thing here, the, uh, the eyedropper and go over there and we're going to select the the blue and that keyed out the blue area so that we can see the paper tear on top of what we did and you see that there's a little you can see my face a little bit through the paper so you can go in and make a lot of adjustments um, you can take the threshold and bring it down um, and you can expand and contract it a little bit um, just to get the keying to work exactly how you want so that doesn't look too bad right there okay so go select the merge hit two so this is what we have right now so we're going to take this merge and put it on top of the outside clip by clicking that clicking the output of the merge to the output of the outside we have a this merge two here we'll select that so you can see um, with the merge two selected i'll take the blending down so you can see that that's sitting right on top of the outside clip and, okay so what we're going to do is select the merge up here hit two so we can see the merge um, with the merge selector, we're going to hit control space and search for the ultra keyer and add that in. And then just like before, we're going to take the little color picker and go right on top of the green and 
we'll hit uh, the ultra keyer and hit two. So you can see it keyed out that part. And we have the tear. So this is sitting on top of the outside image. So we'll click on the merge two that puts those together, select two and connect that to the output. And we basically have our tearaway animation. You can see that there's some, some things showing through. So we would want to do kind of like we did before. Um, we'll take the threshold and bring it down a little bit and make any, any other adjustments that we need. And here's the final result. Oh, you can see there's a little bit, a little bit of green in there, and you could uh, make some more adjustments to uh, to get that out with the king. But that's the basics of how it's done. Okay, so what did what did I learn? Um, I think the biggest overall takeaway from at least this particular video is to kind of slow down and not rush. I think I was kind of in a hurry to get it done. I did a couple of experiments. Um, actually, I did a lot of experiments with the you know ripping the paper and tearing it and the whole thing. Um, and it wasn't quite working and I just went ahead and went with it anyway. I think I probably should have taken a little more time to make sure that it was working and set up exactly the way I wanted before uh, moving forward and making a bunch of clips and ripping things apart. Okay, so as far as the, uh, the actual ripping the paper itself, I think um, I think I needed a little bit, wanted to do a little more variety, at least with the idea I had in my head. Um, I wanted to have some different rips in different directions. Um, I wanted to you know, rip some slower, some faster. I think most of them were a little too slow. I would have liked some that would just ripped apart real quick. Okay, the other thing you'll notice from the video is that sometimes when I'm tearing the paper away, it shifts around a little bit. And that's because I didn't have the paper taped around the box. Um, let me see. Okay, here we go. So um, this is the box here. And you can see I kind of taped on, taped it and um, pulled stuff off a lot. Um, the paper wasn't wasn't down tight enough um, all around because I kind of got I think I got lazy. I was just trying to put a couple pieces of tape on there and and rip it off. And because it wasn't secure when I ripped it, it, was, it shifts around a little bit. Um, and I don't think that looks really good for the way the video is. Um, when you go back and look at it, every time I pull it off, the paper around where I'm pulling is kind of moving and, and shifting around. So if I if I'd secured it better, then ripped, um, the paper would have stayed in place and it wouldn't have moved around. Okay, so I think another big mistake, as you've seen from the uh, the video where I kind of showed you how I set everything up, was that I set this thing up on the floor and it was real convenient and it worked out well because the tripod go on the floor and I don't really didn't really have a table that would could fit the tripod where I wanted to set everything up um, because it was on the floor and I was ripping it and setting up the package and doing it again. Um, it was kind of hard to get to. It was kind of kind of breaking my back a little bit, um, and uh, all the going up and down was kind of difficult. So I ended up moving it, and I kind of rigged it up and put it on this smaller table. I had to kind of um, push the tripod in together. It wasn't super stable, um, but it was a little better setup than on the floor where I originally had it started. Okay, this next one is probably a, a rookie mistake. Um, in this video, I was doing some testing. I would take the SD card out of the camera, put it into the computer, load it, and check it, check it out how it would work. And then I would kind of do it again as I was going through these iterations. Um, and when, with the way I had it set up, the camera and the quick release were not, line, were not lined up the way I needed. So I couldn't actually get the SD card out of the camera without removing the camera from the mount and the quick release and all that. And then I'd have to put it back in. Um, so I, I should have flipped it on the other side. Typically it doesn't matter because I'm not taking the camera on and off and having to get the card in and out of the camera so much. Um, but the next time I do one of these, I'll make sure that the SD card can be accessed a lot easier. Okay, so I'm, I'm using the, the Sony a6300 um, and I know that there's some Wi-Fi capabilities. So this goes back to the, to the media files. Um, it would be really convenient if I could access those files without having to take the card in and out of the camera like that. I think I when I first got the camera, it's probably a couple, two, three years, maybe three years old. Um, I know there, there were some Wi-Fi capabilities and I went in there and tried to figure out how it worked, but it didn't seem like it was doing what I wanted. Um, so I never really went back to that. So I may, I may go back and check to see if there's some way that I could, you know, leave the camera in the setup and just access the things and download them to the computer. I don't think that works. Um, if, if it does and you know how, how that works, then let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear it. Um, but I'm going to do a little investigation, see if I can figure that out. 
Okay, and another issue I had was with um, the remote control and viewing. Typically what I do is I, I have my iPad here and I use this to actually, you know, view what's on the camera through the, uh, I think they call it the Imaging Edge software. Um, and I can, you know, start and stop recording, I can view things. Um, it, it works okay, it, it does an okay job, but the problem, at least with this particular time, is because I was turning the camera on and off and taking the card in and out, every time I did that, I would have to reconnect or restart the, restart the software, connect to the Wi-Fi network in the Sony Imaging software, and then pull that back up. So it was a kind of a delay. Every time I was ready to start filming, I'd have to get my iPad, connect to the, connect to the Wi-Fi network. Um, so I may want to investigate see if there's some better options for remote controlling the camera. Um, you know, I think I don't think this would have been a problem if I wasn't having to, you know, turn the camera on and off and take it out of the mount and um, pull put the SD card in and out. Okay, so with the uh, with the setup, I basically have the tripod with the camera pointing down and the box the box underneath. Um, I had it on this small table and it ended up being difficult because I had two lights around it. I had a light on this side and the light coming from the other side. Um, and because of that, with all the cords, it made it really difficult to get in there and access it. Um, so next time I set this up or do anything like this, I'm going to make sure that I have access, better access to under the camera. Because um, I was trying to get in there, I was trying to put the paper around it because the box was stuck to the desk. I was pulling tape and taping things. Um, so it was kind of frustrating having to walk around all the wires and lights to get to different sides of the setup. And the lighting, I think I could have done a lot better job on the lighting. I should have um, taken more time to make sure that it was lit more evenly. I think that would have been better for the, the way the keying works. Um, some of the lighting is not great. It's a, it's a little harsh. Um, I should have definitely diffused the light more. Um, and I had another diffuser I could have put up, um, but it was just going to make it even more difficult to get in there and get around the package. So I kind of cut that corner and I think uh, it would have been better off if I had you know taken the time to get the lighting more even um, would have looked a lot better. Okay, my last big mistake was um, with this with this box here. Um, when I started doing it, it would pull the paper, the, the box would kind of shift around as I was pulling the paper off. So obviously it needed to be secured um, to the, at least in, in this case, I put it on a little, uh, a small little desk. Um, so I got this double-sided super sticky tape from my wife and put it on there. It worked great until it was time to take it off. And I pulled the box off and the box came off. This piece of tape came off with the box. All the other ones stayed stuck to the table and it took me about 30 minutes of trying to rip it off. The tape was way too sticky. So um, next time I would probably do something different as opposed to putting tape on my table. Okay, anyway, that's a quick dump of some of the things that went wrong. Um, it, it's not really terrible and I'm probably way too, way too critical of myself. Uh, I just kind of always want to do a little bit better. But this is a learning experience. That's why I started this channel. I wanted to try stuff out and you, you do something and the next time you do it a little bit better. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment below. I definitely would love to hear from you. And obviously if you have any ideas of how to fix a lot of my problems, I'd love to hear it. Okay, if you wanna see a video that turned out better, check the one out on top. Um, that's one that kind of I, where I made some stuff and I think it turned out better than this one. Or choose a video, the video down here. This is a video that YouTube thinks you might like to watch. Or subscribe, thank you.